Thank you very much, and we're welcoming as a guest in the committee, but an interested uh, guest, Mr. Crowley of New York. Uh, firstly, let me thank the chairman for allowing me to sit uh, on the committee today and uh, for holding this hearing. I, um, I come to uh, this committee hearing with mixed emotions uh, because um, I have over 105 uh, families who lost loved ones uh, on the September 11th, and we have uh, members of the Ashton family who are here today who lost their son, Tom, at 21 years of age. I also lost my first cousin, uh, Battalion Chief John Moran, and I knew uh, at least seven people intimately very well. Um, so I have, uh, again, mixed emotions, but recognizing the need to hold these hearings. Uh, once again, I commend you, Mr. Chairman, for taking on this responsibility. I have a number of questions that I think I would address to Mr. Shea, Mr. Corley, and Mr. Bement firstly. And one, can any one of you gentlemen tell me who uh, was in charge of amassing the steel and other debris uh, uh, th as a result from the attack of September 11th on the World Trade Center? I'm not sure I understand fully your in question. In other words, who, uh, what entity was in charge of collecting the material? FEMA commissioned the building performance assessment team, and it was that team led by Dr. Corley that would have embraced that responsibility. Did they determine which debris would be sold off as scrap? And if I don't, not, who did? Yeah, I'll defer to Dr. Corley on that. No, we, uh, we did not determine that. Uh, that was uh, determined, I understand, by the uh, city of New York. Uh, when, did we, you be, when did you become aware that uh, the steel from the World Trade Center was being sold off? Uh, I think it was uh, on the order of a week or so before we arrived on site on uh, October the uh, 5th, I believe it so was. So they were, they, in other words, the city was selling uh, or was disposing of uh, material within two weeks of the actual event, or was it prior to that? Uh, it, it may have been prior to that. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure when the first decision was made on that, but uh, uh, I didn't find out. We didn't. Were you, were you disturbed by that? Uh, by finding that out, were you disturbed to find out that the city was actually disposing of or selling off? Uh, we that had material? previously indicated that we definitely wanted to see the steel and select. Uh, did you or did FEMA or any other entity actually ask or tell the city of New York to cease and desist from disposing of that material? Uh, as far as the team is concerned, uh, we made it known that we needed uh, steel uh, and uh, I, I don't, don't have any knowledge that anyone had the authority even to ask them to cease and desist. So no one even asked them politely to stop selling what in all likelihood could be evidence, Mr. Anastani? Oh, no. I believe I was the first one to, to find out that the steel is being recycled. New York Times reporter Jim Glantz told me two weeks after earthquake, after a collapse, and, and I tried to uh, contact city and, and also New York Times reporters tried to make sure we, we can have access to steel to do the research. It was not happening, and I went myself directly, contacted the recycling plant, and made arrangement. Through their cooperation, I started work there and collected the steel. And later, two weeks later, I believe, the uh, ASC team came also, and they started their work. Uh, Mr. Corley, you said that no significant uh, loss occurred, or no, no, no significant difference, I think was the word you used. Yes. Uh, and any outcome would be determined by the loss of that material? That's my opinion at this point, yes. So you don't believe there was any material that was lost that was significant that day? Uh, no, I, I, I really didn't say that. What I said was that I believe, that, or what I implied was that we will be able to draw supportable uh, conclusions and analyze the building to understand what happened without the steel that uh, has been disposed of. In my remaining time, excuse me, doctor, so my light's changing here. Um, I just want to emphasize my support of what Mr. Corbett was talking about. I did not know that you were going to make the suggestion today, sir, of a commission. I was prepared to make a statement today that we should ask the president, uh, as Congress, uh, to initiate uh, a commission similar to what took place after the 1983-84 bombings of our embassies overseas. 
uh, the Inman Commission uh, determine what steps are necessary to secure uh, the existing structures because we can't simply flatten Manhattan uh, or any other major city in this, in this country. We have to deal with the problem because we have major tall structures. Uh, but secondly, in the construction of future buildings and of future high-rises, that they be uh, made with uh, the proper structure that could withstand a terrorist attack. Let me just say, and Mr. Mr. Chairman, in closing, I'm not so sure that this, this subcommittee or this committee can actually get to the bottom of this, which I think is your intent, I, although I think that your uh, attempt is going to be admirable. Uh, I think we need to do more, and let's let academics do this as well. Um, but I do believe that conspiracy theorists are going to have a field day with this. They're going to make the Warren Commission look like a walk in the park. And that's unfortunate, not only for the members of Congress who are trying to work on this issue, but for all the families out there that are listening very carefully to what we're talking about today, what these experts are saying. And uh, I just think there's so much that, that has been lost in these last six months uh, that we can never go back and retrieve. And that's, it's not only unfortunate, it's borderline criminal. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll yield back with that, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Crowley. And the whole purpose of this hearing is to, is to get as much information as we can so that we can be 